heart thoracic anesthesia will deal with patients with life-threatening conditions. Could be heart disease, could be lung cancer, and because of that, obviously, even during the terrible pandemic that we had, we couldn't stop our services. And bear in mind the prevalence of those conditions in the Western country is very high. And obviously we had several issues to deal with because of this. And I believe the first one was dealing with our own anxiety and fears. Um, we had to face, we're still facing a largely unknown virus. We are in the front line, really, uh, because of the way we practice. We do provide the aerosol generating procedures and the risk of contamination is always there. And obviously we were all very worried and very concerned. But at the same time, we had to deal with the patient's anxiety. It was not uncommon getting the question, will I get the virus? Will I catch the virus, doctor? Especially the sick patients undergoing very, very big operation during the especially first peak of pandemic. A very practical, but you know, not insignificant issue was also protecting ourselves and wearing full PPEs especially for patients of unknown or even confirmed COVID status. And clearly doing all of this and maintaining the same level of you know, professionalism and, um, and high practice uh, standards, wearing full PPEs was very, very difficult. And we spent long hours in intensive care, long hours in, in, in theaters. And clearly it was incredibly tiring at the end of the day, again, providing the same level of care in those, you know, circumstances. Working in critical care in the last year has been quite challenging for the team. Um, we've had many situations we've had to overcome and strive um, to achieve what we want to achieve um, in the last year. Obviously, this time last year we were preparing for the start of the pandemic and the possibility of the incoming patients, which also included trying to manage our service, um, which we currently run. Um, including the elective cardiac list, um, thoracic list, and the other specialties that are involved. We've managed to do that. Um, initially, we had a large team of reservists brought into the department, which was something new for us, staff being redeployed from other areas, um, and having to come and adapt to working in a critical care environment, which was very challenging for them, um, and you know, obviously being taken out of their comfort zone. But as a team, we all managed that um, and did very well. Um, actually managed to employ some of those people as a result of that. I've been working through it in intensive care too for the last five months. I originally worked in the hotel, conference and banqueting supervisor, and they were looking for volunteers when COVID arrived. So I volunteered to come through for a, a little change of career. Um, little did I know that I was going to love it. <laughs> and it's been a great experience. Everything's been new, but I've been able to transfer people skills and knowledge, just life knowledge. Just love the interaction, being able to help with the nurses and just having all the stock, everything available, um, hands-on, helping patients, helping with their 24-hour their care. It's a great team to be part of, and you see how it all works together. Everybody needs to work together to for the end goal for the patient, it's great. Certainly with the predicted increase in intensive care numbers, um, we, we significantly reconfigured our service um, to, to, con to really accommodate the, the anticipated increase in patient numbers that were likely to need ventilated. Um, required us to source a lot of additional equipment and uh, to put in quite an extensive training package, uh, both for our existing critical care nursing staff and some other um, um, specialisms within the hospital who were willing to come and help us. In intensive care, we had to teach those staff members how to prone patients, for instance. Um, we had to teach them some basics of intensive care. And we really managed to do that, you know, quite quickly in quite a short space of time. And we really, I think, we, we showed quite a lot of resilience to turn that around quickly and um, put those training packages in place. And I think a really positive thing that came out of that for me was the, the degree of collaborative working across all the specialties in the hospital. For the organisational point of view also, we had to reconfigure the entire service. We had to create new shifts, new rota. We had to actually create a, a new ICU zone, I mean, although 
the Golden Jubilee doesn't have direct access to e and &E. Still, we had to take patients from other units. And the implication of this was massive because we had to change the patient's pathway. Again, protecting, obviously, the surgical patient from the COVID patients and at the same time looking after all of them. And all of that had to be done very quickly. We didn't have much time. When the Four Nations guidance um, was, was brought into play around about the beginning of September, this meant that patients needed to be on either a red, amber or a green um, pathway. Ideally, the patients are on a green elective pathway, but for some patients on the amber pathway, that really presented us in critical care with some problems uh, to try and place these patients post-operatively in either a level three or a level two bed. Um, one of the things that we put into place, and I have to say again, the team really came up with this themselves. It's a clinical, a clinical decision. The teams felt that if we switched um, our ICU-1 with our HDU, that would then provide the necessary cubicle rooms to allow us to place level three patient post-operatively after the cardiac operation and that was implemented within I think probably about a two-week period and it's really um, worked extremely well and we haven't had any issues since then placing cardiac patients post-operatively so that's been a real a real win both for, for the patients and for the staff. In addition um, critical care has also been managing a more complex group of urgent cancer patients and this is a new service really for, for, for the Golden Jubilee but all I can say is the team have really stepped up both nursing and medical and the ancillary staff stepped up and looked after this group of patients and um, with the same care and diligence as they do for our regular core business. The, the first half of the year was really you know consumed with preparing for the pandemic and the second half of the year is really you know our attention has been drawn more towards the recovery phase. We have taken on lots of other specialties including general surgery, orthopaedics, um, the major cancer work from other sites. So we've had to adapt to um, working with different surgeons, different specialties, providing a very different type of care from our normal practice. Um, and we've managed that very well. One of the biggest aspects for this, and particularly for the leadership team in critical care, was actually whilst maintaining the service, was keeping the morale of staff up um, in what was a really, and still is sometimes, difficult situation. Um, we've managed to do that. Staff have been excellent at sort of changing shifts, mucking in, stepping up to the plate when it's required, um, and generally providing the service so that we can maintain that high standard of service to the patients um, at all times. The anaesthetic assistants have done an amazing job. They've showed that they're adaptable, um, they are conscientious, they're hardworking, they're flexible, and they always put the needs of the patient before anybody else. They sacrificed so much throughout this and still continue to do so. They were redeployed to ITU, they've got no ITU experience and they very much, you know, rose to the challenge. Um, since then, they've come back from ITU and we've became almost like a recovery site and they've absolutely risen to the challenge and shown determination, flexibility, adaptability and team spirit and they should be very very proud of themselves. They're an amazing team.